Ryan from E39 Source here today. We are on Hassan's 2000 E39 M5. This is a April of 2000 build. You can very easily check your production date and VIN number by opening the driver's door, looking on the B pillar, and there it is. Uh, so what we're doing today is retrofitting the Vanos Accumulator. Now, if you've noticed, 2000 M5s that have not had this retrofit often have a lot of Vanos noise, a lot of rattle um, on initial startup. It's kind of a bad sound. It makes people that don't know much about this car uh, very uneasy and think there's something wrong with the engine. Um, it's not the case at all. The Vanos rattle on startup during operation, during idle, um, is a normal function of the Vano system. It does not harm the engine. It does not hurt performance. It does not affect longevity. Uh, it just doesn't sound great. So today we're gonna be retrofitting the accumulator that BMW started putting on this car from December of 2000 production. So that would be 2001 cars, but there are some very early 2001 cars that would not have this, um, this, uh, this pressure accumulator. The pressure accumulator works by holding oil pressure um, after, before the car is shut off, and then it uses that stored oil pressure to prime the Vano system uh, so it doesn't run dry there for a second on cold startups. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple. It's gonna install down here. A brief overview on the parts required for this job. We will need the pressure accumulator itself. We will need the wiring harness that runs from the pressure accumulator to a ground in the engine, and then finally the DME box and the ECU for its positive signal. Um, fresh washers I would recommend uh, since you're going to be replacing the hose, that's the fourth part, the hose that goes from this um, oil pressure junction over to the pressure accumulator itself will need to be a different hose that comes with or works with the pressure accumulator. And uh, check the description below, we'll put all the parts and the part numbers down there. We're going to need to remove the um, intake air box, the upper and lower intake plenums, and then we will need DME box or ECU box access to run one pin into one of the electrical harnesses. So uh, we actually just finished the DME box fan installation, so I didn't finish that job since we need to take that apart again. I will include those clips of uh, getting the DME box down to that point here. We do need to firstly remove the upper cabin air filter box. I've done this on camera probably about 6,214 times, but uh, let's make it 15 today. So there's a little lid here with a little clip. You release that, take the lid off, and now is a good time to clean and replace filters if necessary. This one looks excellent. Then we have a little clip here at the bottom. We wriggle the clip off like that. Safe dry location as always. Then there's the piece of trim that lifts right up, or the weather stripping. Then you've uh, three tabs here. Those come off. You can take the box like this and just wiggle it up and out of the way. This now reveals the DME box, which is held in with four Allen screws. We'll get a size on that in a moment. I want to say they are five mil Allen bolts. You want to be careful with these. So the box itself is plastic. Also, I'll give you a warning, the corners on the back and the side of this box are really sharp. Even if you wear like plastic painter's gloves or something, it will easily go through that. It will cut your hands. Ask me how I know. Uh, so be very careful with that. Um, but the screws, the, the, the lid of the box and the um, body of the box is plastic. And then there's metal rivets put in with the threads that allow the screws to thread into that. Um, if they stick, then it just strips. And I found the best way to get around a stripped screw is to just put it on a gun and just buzz the hell out of it. The plastic melts, it comes out. Then you can coat it in glue and put it back in there. So it is indeed a five mil. We're gonna put that on a gun and remove a total of four screws. One, two, three, and four. Airbox removal, you guys have probably done this a million times. Uh, it's real easy on this car. You can drive these with a six millimeter six point socket and or a flathead. We have a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Uh, we can probably leave the upper box attached to the lower box with these four clips. We're just gonna take the whole thing out together. The mass airflow sensor will need to be disconnected. There's two little tabs at the top. You depress them and wiggle the connector off. Also important to note that the connector has two little tabs here on the intake, the intake tubing that uh, you'll need to, to, uh, to, to free the cable from, and that's gonna be the case on both sides. It is important to note that we'll need to remove the driver's side cabin air filter box housing snorkel tube, just like we did on the passenger side. Reason being, there's one of these 10 millimeter plenum nuts kind of obscured below it. Uh, so once that's out of the way, it actually just kind of rotates about 30 degrees maybe? Yeah, 10 degrees. 10 degrees, and then just degrees. pulls straight out. There's some tabs. Don't worry if those tabs are broken. They fit fine if the tabs are broken. I bought new ones years ago, and the tabs broke immediately on them. Uh, so that gives us access to the final 10 mil. 
which we will remove. <laughs> Got real lucky on that one. And uh, Hassan, if you want to do the honors there, you can just lift that upper plenum straight off. If your car is oh a, is it December of 99 or earlier, your plenum will be metal. If it's later, it'll be plastic like that one. And uh, now we get in here, we can see all of the intake snorkels. There's no reason to number these or put them back in the same place. I see people do that all the time. There's six of one kind and then two different ones. So these in here are all the same. And then cylinder five and cylinder one are unique. Um, so as long as they, you know, cylinder one needs to go back on one or five, five needs to go on five or one, and then the other six just go wherever they fit. The intake snorkels are held on to the throttle bodies with a series of, I believe they are 10, no, maybe they're eights, series of eight millimeter nuts. Each one has two, so there'll be a total of 16 eight millimeter nuts we'll need to remove. With the velocity stacks out of the way, now we're greeted by an absolute ton of uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So if you've uh, got the impact tool, it makes quick work of that. We'll need to remove every single one of them. And uh, after we get all of those bolts out, then there's gonna be a series of, I wanna say four or five hoses from the front of the plenum that will need to be disconnected. And they're just hose clamps that you can see from down there, four, five, six millimeter hose clamps that will just disconnect and then pull the plenum up. Here's the front of the lower plenum once it's been removed. So there's more hose clamps down here on the lower side of the cyclone separator. So you've got one here. This one's real easy to get when it's still in the car. Another hose clamp there, that's two. Big one, that's three. Mirroring the bottom, four, five, and whatever one I didn't say here. There's a total of six that you'll need to remove. Um, and then the whole thing, it might be a little bit sticky, so just grab it and pull up, and the entire lower plenum comes off. We now have a beautiful view of the inside of the valley and the throttle bodies themselves. Um, I also disconnected the coolant temperature sensor, I believe that is, uh, with the electrical connector, it just pulled straight off. Um, that gave me a little bit more room to get these hoses here that I just showed you on the plenum. Those are the hoses that actually attach to that. So next up, we have these two plastic black tubes. Cable runs, conduit. Conduit cable runs that uh, hold or hold, house a lot of the engine harness and wiring. We need to remove the one on the driver's side, um, at least for a USA car. And it's held on with just a series of very, very annoying little clips that you've got to use a flathead screwdriver or a pry tool or something small and sharp to be able to pull the, the tabs away um, and, and loosen the whole thing. And there's a total of oh, uh, one, two, Two in, so two in the back, three on the back side of the back of the engine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a total of and then two, oh, the two down here. So what is There's that? a lot. It's, yeah, All of those. All of those need to be released. That gets us into here, and now we have the actual cable run that uh, that needs to be run. So essentially, we're going to be replacing this thing here. I don't even know what it is. It's not a, a, a pressure accumulator, but it's it's something. <laughs> We're gonna be taking that out and, and replacing it with this one over here that uh, Hassan picked up from a parts guy. I don't have any of these available right now. Um, I don't know if Adam does or not, or Mikhail, but uh, that's so yeah, this is the that's connector. gonna be going in there. So we're just replacing that tube with this tube, running the electrical wire through there, through that, into the DME box, and then we'll get you uh, a harness number or name and, and then the pin number where that needs to go. Um, it's also important to note that your DME software needs to have been updated after about 2001, which means it needed um, dealer service after 2001 or so, they updated it, and then the DME knows how to send that signal uh, to hold the pressure to the new pressure accumulator. Let's firstly talk about the electrical connector for the ground. So this is the harness that we're gonna be retrofitting today to the new accumulator. This is what we'll plug into the accumulator. Uh, we follow that down, it's two wires until a point, and the one wire terminates here, at least the way our kit is formed. This is gonna act as the ground wire. The yellow wire that continues will need to be run through the box that we opened up and through the tube and eventually into the DME box and into the DME. We'll get you uh, we'll let you know which exactly which connector and which pin we'll need to install that in. In the meantime, let's focus on the ground. So in this box here that we've opened up, this was originally under a black piece of tape that looked just like that. We cut that away and we found we find a ground block. We've tried to spread that apart and open it and that just is proving to be impossible. So we're gonna take some wire cutters, I think, here in a second and, and just clip it off as close as we can um, right there where my thumb is. Sorry, this is out of focus. It's 
hard to film and move around a whole bunch at the same time. So uh, we're gonna cut it right there. We'll strip back these wires. We have a new ground crimp that uh, we'll be installing on there and just adding in this third ground. We cut the crimp off, stripped back the three wires that were already part of that crimp, and we're ready to add um, our fourth and new ground wire. But to get the wires, both of them actually, up into that conduit, we're gonna come down here and we see this connector. Look below it to the one that's white. Unplug the electrical end of that and you get this. Then there's some tape around these wires and then it goes into a small conduit which enters this box. We're gonna snake these two new wires into this conduit as well. So we'll need to cut back or remove the heat shrink or tape or whatever um, is between the wires and the conduit. And then we'll take our new wire and use some coat hanger or some uh, fish tape or something and um, put the new wires through that. Um, I've actually already stripped. I probably shouldn't have stripped. I may have to cut that off <clears throat> the ground wire on our new cable. That's going to go in there and we're going to just join into this and then add the new crimp. You want to get both your, uh, your power and your ground through that connector there and up into the first conduit box. Um, your ground is going to go over here as we talked about before and get crimped in with the rest of the grounds and then your power wire. I went ahead and got a coat hanger, straightened it out, turned the end of it into kind of an eyelet so it's a little bit easier to push through uh, these hoses and then electrical taped very cleanly and neatly the wire to it. And we started with that little bridge there, that bridge cable in between the two boxes. And we did need to go ahead and remove the box off the um, bank one passenger side electrical conduit. That took like 20 minutes. It's the same thing as the passenger side. It's just very frustrating to work around uh, all those little clips. So I've got it, I've got the yellow wire right here. The next step is gonna be running it up this tube. We did remove one small piece of firewall trim there. Um, you remove the rubber gasket from the top, that just lifts right off. Then there's gonna be one of those gold tabs. Um, use a flathead screwdriver to pry that off and then the piece of trim will just fall off in your hands. Actually, there's, there's like a little quarter turn thing uh, clip that plugs in right there. Just turn that a quarter and then it falls off in your hands. And what we're doing right now, so we don't have to try to bend the coat hanger um, as this hose kinks, we're just disconnecting, this is the engine harness here, we're disconnecting the engine harness from everything in the DME box. So we're just unplugging it from the DME or the ECU and then anything else that plugs in in that box. So what we're gonna do is take the engine harness out, hold it upright, and then we'll be able to feed our yellow power wire for the accumulator straight into the engine harness and then pin it into the ECU. Moving forward with the wiring, the positive wiring, we need to go through the little bridge as I talked about before. Then you have a bit of a breaking point here, and this is where you can just, you know, get the wire, it's the yellow one there on top, get it all to here. Pull it all through, make it nice and tight, and then continue using a coat hanger or fish tape or whatever you've got um, to hold the rest of the engine harness that goes over to the DME box vertical, as straight as you can. Uh, we used a quarter drive, very long, 12, 14, or 16 inch extension to kind of straighten out uh, the tubing a little bit more. We used uh, one coat hanger that we cut in half. We actually ran start, we started up here, ran part of it down there, then pushed the other one through and, and made two hooks on the end like this, connected them, crimped them down with some needle nose pliers, and we were able to pull uh, the wire all the way through. So we have it here at the DME box, and I'm gonna look up next what connector, what harness it needs to go into and which pin and figure out how to depin that and slide it in. At the DME, we're gonna be pinning into the gray block of the second connector from the passenger side into pin number eight. Pin number eight, gray block, second connector from the passenger side of the car. So I did have to extend our cable a little bit. It's not the prettiest I know, but it'll work. And we're into pin number eight. This is pretty easy to take apart. The gray block just has a little tab, so you use a tiny like screwdriver the right there to depress the tab. Slide the block out. There's numbers. It says one through six, and then seven through 12. So find number eight, just push it in there. It pops in with a nice click, and now we'll put the DME box back together. All right, so we just got the old part out. This is what it looks like, um, and this is the new one. So I guess there's something up here. This is where the connector is. A type and of it's, solenoid that holds pressure, I believe. Yeah, exactly. So it's holding pressure, so it takes away the rattle. Again, it doesn't really harm anything, but the noise is annoying for a lot of people. All right, so we're using an S62 that's already out of the car just to show you guys how to get the old one out. It's a bit easier this way. Basically, there's two 10 millimeter uh, bolts here, one at the top and one. It's kind of hard to get to, but for reference purposes, there's two holes if you see this bracket. If you can get your socket through the bottom hole, then you can get all the way through and uh, loosen the bottom one. There's just these two brackets that hold the actual accumulator in. So once you get those two bolts out, um, 
the accumulator will just come right out. You have to undo this. Um, I believe it's a 13. I can double check. Um, get this out, unscrew it, and then this whole accumulator will just slide out. This hose is just, it looks like it's permanently attached somehow to this. Um, so it'll all come out as one piece. We're pinned into the DME. That's put back together and ready for the lid. Um, we did put the crimp on the ground. There were a total of four wires that needed to go back into that. And then we went ahead and, and just reinstalled the, I thought it was black, it was green. This just little plug that goes over it uh, to kind of keep that protected with a drop of super glue to keep that in there since it's no longer um, heat shrunk. But uh, we're ready to put the lids back on those two electrical conduit boxes. Hassan's been working on the accumulator install over here. Any words of wisdom on that? Um, not really. It's just really tight. I mean, to get in there, it's, you yeah, have to play it's a with it. really small area to work. Yeah. Um, but it looks like it installs the same way the other one did. The difference is it comes up higher and there's the electrical connector that uh, we've retrofit. So uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and work on reassembly, which will start with the conduit box lids, uh, then the lower plenum, making sure we have all of the, uh, the, uh, the six hoses lined up and the hose clamps in the right place, ready to attach to the bottom of the lower plenum. We'll do these last, all the bolts, all the 10 mils that hold the lower plenum to the throttle bodies and then the velocity stacks, the eight mils that have two on each one. And uh, at this point, it's pretty straightforward. We're all back together. The cowls go back together just as you would expect. Um, it's, you know, fairly time consuming to get everything done and the six hoses under the plenum and then all the 10 mils and all the eights. And finally the tens on top, making sure that your small bracket back there for that uh, vacuum line seats under the 10 millimeter bolt right there. If you have that bracket in the first place, uh, we did need to pull off this upper coolant hose to gain better access to the uh, pressure accumulator itself. Uh, so make sure that goes back in place and then you adjust your coolant level accordingly. Um, and a brief note on the lower cabin boxes, as I just mentioned in the last video on the DME box van, there is a uh, lip here, a step, where it goes from the cowl down to the cabin box. And the cowl needs to sit on top of the cabin box. The way water runs down the windshield over the cowl into the box and then out uh, drained into the fender liner, um, it's all order of operations and proper sandwiching and seating. So if you need a flathead screwdriver or a pick tool or something to just lift that cowl trim up on top of the cabin box trim, you're all set. It's the same on both sides. So that is the pressure accumulator retrofit. I didn't spend as much time down here on the pressure accumulator itself. It's just a series of bolts, a couple of washers. You want to make sure those all go back in order. Um, and then just two 10 mils that hold the pressure accumulator onto the engine itself. Um, the wiring is probably the most challenging part up through those conduit boxes and then into the DME box. But uh, we're all set. That's the DIY. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments and questions down below. Emails ryan at e39source.com. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care.